Hi everyone, the sun is setting and Big Church Down is coming to an end, but we have an amazing story that we want to share with you. I am here with Patricia and we've just been having an amazing chat about all the insane stuff that's happened in her life and how God's met her through each and every one. So Patricia, why don't you tell us about your, um, your childhood and growing up? My childhood and growing up, I was raised in domestic violence and um, there was a lot of brokenness and lies. And when I received the word of God, his truth and his love in my life, I had a major healing from the inside out. And um, God's done amazing things in my life. And um, yeah. pretty great stuff. So tell us about um, the witchcraft that you experienced. Well, when I, w I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, and when I was about five years old, I saw a witch in my room. And um, I had witchcraft operating in my family. I didn't know spiritual things at that time. Um, and obviously when I told my family, they didn't believe me. And um, yeah, I had a spiritual gift that I could see bad things happening and then, and then it would happen on the news. And so um, I came later on when I was in about fifth grade, I got kicked out of class for practicing witchcraft which I didn't realize that that's what I was doing, or playing the Ouija board, um, going to psychics, tarot cards, astrologers, mediums, co connecting with the dead, um, asking them if they're real to reveal themselves, and they actually did. And um, God's very real as well. Yes. Yeah, so tell us about that realization of finding Jesus, the one true Lord. What was that experience like from witchcraft over to Jesus Christ? Well, all my life I've always felt Jesus' presence. I've always felt his love and I've always felt his protecting hand on my life, for example. In um, Miami, I was in Hurricane Andrew in 1992 in August and we were in the eye of the hurricane. We were meant to evacuate and um, they told us at the last minute where we had nowhere to go, so we stayed. And in Miami, all the houses have bars on all the windows and doors. So we just waited it out. We boarded up all the windows. And after the hurricane, the aftermath was complete devastation. There was dead bodies and dead animals everywhere. And at that moment, I walked out to the end of my sidewalk and I looked up to heaven and I asked God, why did you keep my family alive and let the other people die? And he said, because I have a powerful plan for your life. And I heard his audible voice. And um, my conversion wasn't at that point, but spiritually the first time that I encountered Jesus and saw Jesus, I didn't know Jesus could make himself appear. I didn't know what the Bible said about appearing after his resurrection. Um, I was in, it was after my mom died. I was grieving the loss of my mom. And I, and when you're raised in the world, you, you think the other side means heaven, but it doesn't. It means the supernatural, but not of heaven. And so, um, I was mourning and it was dark in the room and all of a sudden Jesus' face appeared above my computer and I saw his face and his eyelashes and pupils and the entire room filled with such a thick peace that I'd never experienced in my life and I said, I know that's you Jesus, I didn't know you can do that but please don't leave me, just stay here. Wow, that's amazing and there he is put in your heart forever. Um, Patricia, tell us about uh, Mexico, tell us what happened to you when you went to Mexico to deliver a Bible to a certain man. In 2010, I went to Mexico to the um, Mayan pyramids, and there were witch doctors out there. And that was the first encounter I had with the Holy Spirit on my way to the pyramids. I began feeling um, pains on my chest and afflictions on my legs. And I felt like this is an area where heart attacks take place and there's like heart problems on the heart. And I didn't have the knowledge, but the Holy Spirit um, gave me his wisdom to know that witch doctors were out there worshiping at that moment. And so um, my ex-husband and his family were with me and they're Hindu and they go to witch doctors as well. But my ex-husband didn't believe in spiritual things. So when I tried to explain to him, they said I was crazy. So as soon as we got to the um, Mayan tour, I asked our tour leader if there were witch doctors out there. And he said, yes, they're, they're here now worshiping. And so he told me that he had every religious book out there except the Holy Bible. And I had, just before I left the UK, I bought one bright pink little Holy Bible with butterflies all over it. And um, he said to me, who's the author of the Holy Bible? And so I said, the Holy Spirit, but he wanted to Google it. So I just said, you know, the Holy Bible. And um, we walked through the 
Mayan tour, and I could feel the presences in the pyramids staring at me, and I didn't know the history about it, and I asked him, and he said that there were people buried in there, and they would clap and call the spirits, and that one lady was thrown from the top of the pyramid stairs all the way down to the bottom, and we started talking about spiritual things, and I asked him if those spirits that he called on and called gods ever tried to harm him and he said yes they did and i said well if you ever feel afraid or threatened you can just say the name of jesus and they have to go and so he asked me for my bible and then that was major breakthrough major blessing on his life he was so excited he carried it around with pride as he continued tours however as soon as we left psalm 91 i've encountered psalm 91 my entire life where god says it will come near you but it will not touch you and so um we were in a seven-seater Suburban, and there was a bus behind us with 50 tourists from France, and the driver was Mexican. And um, that flaming arrow was released for me because I just delivered a Holy Bible. And um, to a very dark corner of the world, focused on witchcraft. And um, the bus behind us flipped over into a ditch. And in Mexico, there's only one paramedic. So it takes a very long time for them to come to the rescue. So we reversed the vehicle. We pulled it over on the side of the road and we climbed down into the ditch and we um, rescued all the 50 people and brought them out of the vehicle. There was one injured person with um, backlash and we put them on top of the bus and we had all 50 people on the other side of the road. And when I looked at the Mexican driver, I said, that was Jesus. He said, I know. <laughs> so Patricia, you were saying that someone had shot a flaming arrow. Yes. So the Bible says that um, no weapon formed against you will prosper, but God never promised weapons wouldn't be formed. So God protects us from those flaming arrows and he gives us the wisdom to show us what's coming against us so that through the blood of Jesus, we can break it off of our life. This is just amazing. I hope you're enjoying listening to this at home about just all the things that Patricia has faced. Um, Patricia, tell us about when you were in the UK and if you don't mind talking about it, all the, uh, how God helped you through all the d domestic violence that you went through. Well, my ex-husband was actually deported to the UK for selling crack cocaine and breaking my tailbone. Lots of physical abuse, mental abuse, uh, financial abuse, spiritual abuse, verbal abuse, all of the domestic violent realm. And um, he was deported back here. He was facing 35 years in prison in America um, for selling drugs within a thousand feet of a schoolyard. And I was at the arraignment and um, he prayed a prayer when he was in prison to Jesus. Now his family are Hindu, so they worship idols. And he prayed a prayer to Jesus and the judge said that you can't even get out of prison to say goodbye to your mom. And so that night he actually got out of prison miraculously. He said that there was an anointing service going on in his cell and they anointed him. And he was out on the prison courtyard and he looked up and prayed to Jesus and asked Jesus to get him out of prison. So he said it began raining and a song called rain down on me came a worship song yeah. and then um, he got out for 24 hours and then the judge found out he was out and ordered him back into prison and then he was deported so he really cried to Jesus to get him out of prison but when he was deported and given a second chance at life he came back to this country and the Bible just went under the bed so I went through more years of domestic violence and abuse we got married um, I didn't really know what, how to explain what domestic violence was until I took domestic violent courses in the UK. And um, I had more children, we were married, and um, the closer I got to God, the more the abuse grew. The more God healed me, the more broken he was trying to make myself and the children. So I gave myself, I was, I was actually in the police academy when I went back to America in 2006 sorry 2004 and I was running the track because we ran about seven miles a day and I heard the audible voice of God speak to me over my headphones and say I want you to go back to the land where I've called you to so I said so someone randomly came up to me and said if your dream doesn't come true you can get another dream I said okay father God if you want me to go back to England to the land that you've called me to then I'm, my new dream is going to be that I want to be a real Christian all my life when I grew up I just wanted to be a real Christian but because of all the brokenness I thought that it was impossible for God and so when I came back to the UK, I found a Baptist church and I was sitting in it. And then God confirmed that for those of you who leave your mother and father and everything that you're blessed, 
And so I um, went on a healing retreat at LL Ministries in 2009, and I received complete deliverance and spiritual freedom. The spirit of death went out, and the spirit of life came in. And from that moment on, I gave my life to Christ. And then things became worse with my marriage. So the spiritual warfare, um, he got baptized and used the Bible to cover up abuse, which is a lot of it's going on in the church today in marriages, which is very not there needs to be more of an awareness made within the body of Christ, not just outside the church or outside the country, but actually in this country and in these churches. Domestic violence and spiritual warfare, especially Christian persecution. My children and I have suffered the domestic violence as a result of Christian persecution of our faith and our love for Jesus, just for loving Jesus. So Patricia, you're no longer with that man, is that correct? No, I've divorced him, but as a result of that, um, my daughter's in therapeutic foster care in Hastings, where I went went to a women's refuge one time and um, my two sons are currently with him so I'm fighting for custody of all three of the children. So Patricia you know all the stories you've shared with us I'm sure a lot of people will be able to relate to different parts of it what would you say um, has been the main anchor for you or what would you say has really just um, held you through you know that time all that you've been through you know God is our anchor through every single situation we go through in every season of life but how have you found and what would you say to anyone watching at home um, just to really help them through all the situations whether it's like yours or it's not like yours what do you think um, you could you, you would say to those people who um, are going through difficult situations right now I would like to encourage all the people that are suffering domestic violence, women, children, even men, and Christian persecution around the world and in the UK, that um, the unconditional, unending, everlasting love of our Heavenly Father will get you through anything that's designed to break you. And even if you've become a backslidden Christian and you've lost all hope and you've been judged by the multitude around you, God's love will rebuild you. His spirit of resurrection will bring you from spiritual death right back to life again. Jesus is stepping out and just saying, take my hand and, and come to me because he wants you to have a revelation of his love. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing your story, thank Rebecca. You. Uh, sorry, Patricia. Um, thank you for all you've shared with us. It's so good to hear how God has moved in your life and all the amazing things he saved you from. Um, so thank you so much for your thank story. You. Um, you. And we hope you've enjoyed yourself this weekend. Thank you. God bless. Be serving at, um, the persecuted church and making um, positive changes in the lives of those who are suffering persecution as well and domestic violence. What a great thing to be doing. Thank, thank you so much, God Rebecca. All right, we'll catch you guys later. We're going to head over to the main stage now.